Hello, welcome to Electric Focus. And you may have a company car at work or you may have a salary sacrifice scheme available to you. And if you're just about to order a car, you may be thinking about electric vehicle at this point because there's some tax benefits. But how good are those tax benefits against the extra cost you have to pay for the electric car version? Well, let's have a look at a specific example to answer that question. So first of all, let's have a look at how company car tax works if you're not sure. So you take the value of your car, that includes all accessories as well, so the total retail value of the car. You then take the CO2 emissions, which you normally find on the manufacturer's website, and then you check the HMRC table to see what the benefit in kind tax is applied to that. So you take the CO2 emissions and you'll see how much tax you've got to pay and it will tell you the year that the tax applies to. So once you've got that percentage figure, you can then apply that to the total cost of the car, including accessories. And then after that, you take that figure and times that by your highest rate of tax. So for example, if it's 40%, you pay 40% of that value in tax each year. So that's a brief explanation of how that works. So let's look at how a salary sacrifice scheme works. So you sacrifice part of your salary to pay directly for the lease of the car. Let's say it's 500 pounds for the lease. So the money's taken out of your pay before tax. So let's say it's 500 pounds, you've paid for that lease, and then the tax is then applied to the rest of your earnings. So what that effectively means is, if you're say a 40% taxpayer, that 500 pounds then becomes 300 pounds because you're saving on the 200 pounds tax. So you're only actually paying 300 pounds for that car. Now then you have to pay benefit in kind tax in the same way you do for a company car. Now because it's only 2% benefit in kind tax at the moment on an electric car, then it's a very small amount to have to pay. So you're saving this 40% on that 500 and then you're only having to pay this 2% for benefit in kind tax because it's significantly different for petrol and diesel cars. So I hope it gives you a brief explanation because we're going to apply these figures when we come to looking at this example. We're going to look at the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe 420i 2 litre M Sport, short name, and we're going to compare that to the BMW i4 Grand Coupe eDrive 40 M Sport Auto. So I've tried to get an equivalent car for electric and for petrol to show you the difference. So let's take the petrol version first. Now, the, we're not gonna add any extras to this. We're just gonna take the list value of that car before extras, right? So the cost of that car is 43,250 pounds. Now, you've then got the benefit in kind tax, which is 35% on that car, so it's really high. And then you apply that 35% to come up with a figure of 15,138 pounds. You've then got to pay the 40% tax on that if you're a 40% taxpayer. We're gonna use 40% in this example. So that's 6,055 pounds 20. And then if you divide that by 12 to give you a monthly value, you're paying 504 pounds 60 in tax alone for that car. So that's regardless of any contribution you need to make towards that car, you're just paying five, or you're just paying, you're paying 504 pounds 60 a month in tax alone. So that's pretty significant, yeah? Now let's have a look at the electric version. Now, first of all, it's a lot more expensive as a car. It's 57,630 pounds, and that is, 14,380 pounds difference in terms of the value of the car. However, I've looked at my own company car scheme to see the lease difference, which can vary. You need to look at your own scheme as well. And the lease cost difference for that car is 165 pounds a month more. So you're paying 165 pounds a month or more for that car. Now, if you've got a company car scheme where you can choose either of those and pay nothing, well, happy days, you haven't got 165 pounds to pay anyway. But in the case of some schemes, certainly my scheme, you get an allowance and if you pay, if you want a particular car over that allowance and you can have it, but you have to pay the difference. And in my case, I would have to pay that 165 pounds because both cars are well over the allowance. 
So that we'll take that as an example. So £165 more. However, you've then only got to apply 2% benefit in kind tax. So you take that 2% uh, of the value of 57,630, which is 1153, so 1,153 pounds. You then take the tax of 40%, which is 461 pounds 20. And then if we look at that on a monthly basis over 12 months, that's 38 pounds 43 pence. So 38 pounds 43 pence against 504 pounds 60 on the petrol version. So incredibly different, 466 pounds saving there, but you've still got to pay this 165 pounds extra between the two different models. So the net difference in terms of having the electric car over the petrol car in this example is 301 pounds 17 pence so you can have that electric car which is a lot more expensive car yes but you can have it for 301 pounds less than a petrol equivalent so significantly different and we're not even talking here about costs of a fuel that you may have to pay when you're not getting it paid by the company. We're not going to look at that. We're just talking purely on the basis of the lease here. And you can see there's a big, big saving on that car. So that's one example. And you need to look at your own scheme and have a look at the particular car you're looking at. But it does show you how incredible that tax position is with the benefit in kind tax only being 2% on company cars. It makes a huge difference to company car drivers. And also it gives you a fantastic opportunity if you're looking at a salary sacrifice scheme as well. One thing to be aware of is that company car tax is fixed on electric cars at 2% until the end of the tax year 2024 to 2025. So we certainly know it will only be 2% up to that point. Beyond that, we don't know what the tax is going to be on electric vehicles. So there is some risk there that we don't know what the future holds. However, you would expect that the government are going to still encourage people to switch to electric cars. So it still should be low and compared to certainly a petrol or diesel car in the future. So I hope that was useful as an example. As always, please like and subscribe and I'll speak to you soon.